Hey guys, Squatch Reloading here. Hey, today we're going to go over the my new Dillon XL750. I want to talk about my first 1,000 rounds, my experiences, and just a little bit about how I have mine set up, and then some of the differences that you might see on the 750 versus the 650, and is it really worth the upgrade from the 650? So stick around, we're going to go through all that in this video. So let's get going. So guys, my, my first impression of the, of the new XL750 when I got it, you know, the packaging is typical Dylan. It is uh, very, very robust, nice packaging. It's like vacuum formed foam. The press isn't going anywhere. Um, you know, the box was complete and uh, I had no issues. Everything just kind of bolted together, especially, you know, with the Dylan accessories, it, it just goes together like a breeze. So from that perspective, I mean, it was it was very easy to set up um, the the press comes with a new color instruction manual so you know from that from that side of it uh, it's, it's top-notch Dylan quality okay guys I got my XL 750 you know it's all set up and it's all pretty much straightforward Dylan stuff I had an extra strong mount from one of my 550s I'm utilizing that along with a bullet tray I had the wrench set here um, that I'd had previously, so I put that on there. I do have the uh, case feeder, um, the powder cop, which I'm, I'm still in the process of learning that. Um, you know, we'll, we'll kind of see how that goes, uh, but so far it's been pretty, uh, pretty nice to have. But, uh, and I also have the uh, roller handle here. I had an extra one of those. So uh, it's, it's pretty much set up. I got a couple extra tool heads at the moment. Uh, right now I'm focusing on uh, nine millimeter. You know that's that's probably my big runner as far as competition loads. And then I have a, a 10 millimeter uh, tool head here set up. Well, I don't have it all set up, but uh, I'll show you here. I uh, got the tool head and a stand here, so we'll see how many calibers I end up setting up on here. But uh, yeah, so there it is. So um, like I said, pretty much all Dylan. So what I thought would be good is I'm going to go through some of the key differences between the XL650 and the XL750. Now most of you know or have watched my videos before knew that I had an XL650 in the past and it was silky smooth, great press, the, you know, the same as this press as far as the operation. I mean, it, it, is, it is top notch. But uh, my struggle with the 650 was the uh, auto indexing of the primer system or the telephone dial i just never never got into it never i thought it was a little cumbersome on changeovers and things like that and uh, you know it was my my first real progressive uh reloading press so i'd had a, a 550 in the past and i was very comfortable with that so that's where i went back to but uh the changes that Dylan made on the XL750, which was very reminiscent of the 550, kind of piqued my interest. I did a lot of research, and hence is why I decided to go ahead and, and get back into an auto indexing progressive. So I'm going to go over some of the differences on the 750 versus the 650. All right, so the biggest change on the 750 versus the 650 is the addition of the linear priming system that is very familiar to you guys running the 550s. Um, the previous generation or the 650 had um, an auto indexing wheel primer system where it was continuously priming where this is an on-demand priming system and I'll give you an example. If you drop a case in like say from your your uh, case feeder and for some reason it comes up side you know it comes in upside down and you pull it out as this indexes you even if there is no cartridge here it's not letting that primer go anywhere whereas on the 650 it would spin you know send the primer down the uh, the notorious ski slope there and so every time that you cycle the press if the primer wasn't um, put into the cartridge it would chuck that primer out into uh, the ski slope which was kind of a pain because then you'd have to you know keep it in a flip tray whatever put it in a primer tube and then put it back in the press whereas this system 
the primer, if you do not use it, it stays in the primer cup. So um, you can take that as an upgrade or not, but uh, it is one of the key differences there. So while we're talking about the primer system, another change that you'll note, uh, especially when you're using this linear primer system, is the two thumb screws here. So switching over from large to small primers are pretty easy. You remove these two thumb screws, switch out to the large cup on the primer bar, and you know, of course, you got to change the uh, the magazine tube and the uh, plastic adapter uh, point at the bottom. But changing from large to small is a lot uh, quicker. And there's not as much disassembly of the press to make that happen with the auto index wheel of the 650. Another difference you're going to notice on your 750 versus the 650 is the addition of webbing inside the press frame here. Um, Dylan had added more material to strengthen up the, the press body itself. And I think I read a statistic somewhere, it was 15% more material, but it, you'll notice the addition of this webbing uh, that's not present in the uh, 650. Another major change that you'll see on the 750 versus the 650 is in the uh, cam indexing system. Now this uh, cam block here is, is the same as the 650. Uh, with the addition of, or with the change in the 750, they've added a roller bearing here um, instead of on the 650, had a corresponding uh, block, just like this one, that the uh, indexing cam would, would rotate against. Now, a lot of us who had the 650s uh, went ahead, there was a plenty of aftermarket upgrades to add this bearing uh, to your 650, but uh, it does make a, a significant difference in the smoothness of the indexing cam. Now at some point on the XL650, uh, Dylan did add the Zerk fittings uh, for the main pins of the, uh, of the press but some of the older generations did not have these uh, greasable or serviceable Zerk fittings uh, where you could add grease to the press. But all of your XL750s are gonna come with Zerk fittings for uh, routine maintenance and serviceability. So I wanna summarize a couple things. Um, I did complete my first 1,000 of a uh, nine millimeter. Uh, overall, the, the press ran ran great. You know, there was a couple hiccups and I'm gonna talk about those real quick. And I actually did a video on the uh, linear slide bar uh, issue that I had. Um, so go check that out um, if you're having some hangups there. Um, the other issue, and it's not an issue, it's, it's a very uh, a prevalent thing, especially with nine millimeter when you're running uh, some of your higher uh, cartridge capacity powders um, some powder spillage on the index plate. So, you know, I looked at, and what I've done in the past is I had uh, just trimmed the spring on the index ball and that, you know, alleviated a lot of the issue. Um, I'm gonna show you where I trim, trim that spring, but before I get into that, I also tried uh, an aftermarket uh, brush and I'm not gonna call the company out but uh, it was a brush that uh, you put in place of your, your brass inserts there on your index plate. And it was an, it was an abomination, to, <laughs> to be honest. Um, it really made no difference on my 750. Uh, in fact, it, it actually made more of a mess because the bristles uh, started coming out of the brush and they were all over the place. But uh, so, you know, using running nine millimeter you know through this press and some of your other cases we're going to get um, a lot of powder uh, use up a lot of that ca uh, cartridge capacity it, it's just part of the game now you can change your method uh, by you know placing your fin your finger on the cartridge as it comes around to try to stabilize it or you can slow down the indexing speed as you as you come forward to slow it down but at the end of the day it's it's just something that that is um, maybe there's something new out of the market that that helps with that but uh, you know the as far as trimming the spring that was the quickest easiest way to alleviate 
a portion of the powder spillage that I saw. But um, so I'm going to show you where I trim the spring uh, in case you guys want to try that. Okay, where I trim the spring, and before I get into that, you know, anytime you get a new press, if there is a spare parts kit available, grab that because there's every little bit and piece, spring, pin, uh, anything that you may need that will go wrong with this press, you'll have it on hand, and it's pretty inexpensive when you compare the price of the press, you know, 20, 30 bucks, and it's just peace of mind. But to get onto the spring, as you can see the multiple coils here now what I do is at the end where the end of the wire uh, comes together in the coil I take a pair of side cuts and I nip it off right there and that essentially eliminates one coil and what that does is it takes some of the it reduces the amount of tension that's on the detent ball inside of your shell plate and it, it, it it does just enough where it does reduce the amount of powder spillage that you see on the index plate. But I'm going to show you the best way to deal with this problem. Okay guys, the absolute best way to deal with the powder spillage issue on the 650 or the 750 is, is this. Every time that you change primers, this a can of compressed air or if you got a compressor in your shop just blow the shell plate out um, a quick tip make sure if you raise it up especially with the new linear slide bar system uh, from Dylan raise it up so you don't blow the primer out of your primer cup but this is the best way to really deal with the powder spillage if, if you're hung up on it um, you know trim the spring a little bit that's gonna help but uh, you know I don't know that and, and correct me if I'm wrong leave a comment below there is no product or there is nothing that's going to alleviate all the issues when you're running um, max capacity on your cartridges um, I think there's a lot of snake oil products out there so I wouldn't spend the money personally if it was me trim the spring that'll help out on the tension um, reduce some of the uh, the jarring of the cartridge as it comes around but again this this right here is the best way to deal with this spent powder okay so the big question is going to be is the XL750 an upgrade from the XL650 and keep in mind guys this is this is my opinion here but the answer for me is no it, it's not an upgrade from the XL650 it functions the same it runs the same it's silky smooth just like the XL650 you know a lot of the upgrades that are in this machine a lot of us have already done to our XL 650s anyways and they're they're minor in comparison to what the cost is of buying a new press and trying to go through the hassle of selling our old press or whatever um, with, with all that being said it's not an upgrade now for me it's it's a change in the press with the linear uh, slide bar priming system for me it was a selling point because I wasn't a fan and and again this is just me and that's why I went back uh, to the 550 setups that you guys have seen on my channel before so uh, moving into this press for me was a, a big pickup obviously in productivity and it's uh, very familiar to to what I was used to working with on the 550s but is it an upgrade absolutely not in my opinion now from my 550 to a case feeder is it an upgrade absolutely I picked up a huge uh, chunk of productivity uh, moving into the auto indexing and um, you know the the case feeder um, worked very similar in nine millimeter I was kind of shocked um, I did have several backwards nine millimeter cases and when I got into like you know some of the larger stuff like 38 special and 10 millimeter just kind of playing around with the case feeder they, they ran flawless I never had any issues and in fact um, I was kind of messing around so I set up just a universal decapping die and ran a thousand uh, 10 millimeter cartridges that I had just to decap them and I didn't have one not not one single uh, cartridge that come backwards down the case feeder 
So I don't know if it's just the the length of the nine millimeter or you know if there's just a little bit too movement or too much movement um, that caused that issue. But you know um, as far as from my 550 to my 750, you know I still had uh, I think out of the thousand that I ran uh, probably you know five or six that come come down backwards. So that was a, a little bit of a you know very very similar to what I experienced on the 550, but the uptick in production um, with the 750 uh, far outweighs that. And in fact, you know, that's what I was accustomed to anyways. The only difference I had was the learning curve of every time that you cycle this press that your shell plate is clocking or indexing. So other than that, um, you know, it, it was pretty much standard the, the same. So uh, again, you know, is it an upgrade from the 650? Uh, Squatch Reloading here says, no no it's not an upgrade at all and in fact if if you guys are comfortable with the uh continual or continuous priming and you can find a great deal on an xl 650 i would say snatch it up and you're gonna have a press that's gonna last you for a lifetime so uh that's kind of my thousand round review i wasn't gonna bore you guys with me sitting here cycling the press a thousand times um but uh i hope you got some information out of this that you can use uh, don't forget to check us out over on Facebook at Squatch Reloading. We're also on Instagram at Squatch Reloading. And all these videos are on Utah Gun Exchange, Gun Streamer, and the Reloaders Network. So until next time, guys, God bless.